Shalom. Giving our praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I want to read through Romans, the ninth chapter. Uh, we'll see how far we can get. It's pretty much uh, an impromptu uh, off the top. Um, so we're just going to um, roll in the spirit, you know, whatever precepts um, come to mind. I pulled up a few. Um, we'll roll with it. All right. So um, this is uh, Romans, the ninth chapter. In the first verse, it says, I say the truth in Hamashiach. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, meaning he's bearing his soul, all right? Uh, he's speaking through the Spirit. He means what he's saying. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, my mind. All right, this is constantly on my mind. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. All right, and what he's saying, because let's read it in the NLT. I have it pulled up in the NLT as well. All right, Romans 9 and 3. For my people, all right, of the Jews, my brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Hamashiach if that would save them. So basically what he's saying is he, if he could take on all of the curses, all right, and, you know, himself be blot out, you know, to save Israel, he would do that. You know, as Hamashiach did that for us. As a matter of fact, let's get that uh, in the book. Let's see here. Galatians, the third chapter. Let's see here. Galatians 3 and 13. Hamashiach hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. All right. When he took on all of our sins. Okay. He took on the, the, the curse. Okay. It says, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So he redeemed us from the technicalities, the curse, you know, the the, the punishment that came, you know, with the uh, not keeping of that first covenant and its technicalities and everything like that. You know, and how did he do that? By being made a curse for us. That brought us back to the Heavenly Father. So Paul is ultimately saying he wished he could be that sacrifice uh moses also said the same thing this is exodus 32 and 31 so moses returned to yahweh and said oh what a terrible sin these people have committed all right they were worshiping that calf and doing evil they have made gods of gold for themselves it says but now if only <laughs> if you will only forgive their sin but if not erase my name from your record all right you have written but the lord replied unto moses no i will erase the name of everyone who has sinned against me <laughs> all right so you know here it is moses is uh ultimately just asking you know to be a sacrifice you know for on their behalf you know so Going back to Romans, the ninth chapter, because I know, you know, a lot of people read that and they're like, what does that mean? I remember that was a controversy a while back. Like, what exactly does this mean? What is he saying? Well, Romans nine and four. All right. Let's read it again. For I wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. OK, who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and what is the adoption? You know, uh, the Heavenly Father bringing the Israelites back. Okay, when you read that word adoption, all right, it straight up tells you. And this is what they're, they're heard about, all right? Strong's G, 5206. We are the seer. We are the seer. And we're just going to get to the point. That relationship which the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all nations. All right. And what does the scripture say? When the time came, the Lord sent his own son. OK, uh, made according to the law, meaning he came through the seed of a man. 
Okay, he fulfilled the whole law. All right, if he didn't, he wouldn't be the perfect sacrifice. He 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 fulfilled all of those technicalities. Right, he fulfilled them. If even from his birth. Okay, he fulfilled the law. All right, he was circumcised on the eighth day. His mother went through the purification process. Okay. He came in the, in a flesh just like us. So that's what makes his 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 what he did so much more powerful, man. That he didn't give in to the 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 uh the uh you know the the temptation of sin to stay obedient to his calls, all right, that whole time, man. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Anyway, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption being brought back to the most high and the glory and the covenants. OK, the first covenant, which we break the second covenant, which we're going to be made perfect in the giving of the law. And the services of the most high and the promises, all of these things pertain to the Israelites point blank period, man. OK, and then you want to jump into the Gentile thing, which that's addressed in this chapter. Well, the Gentiles who were, were open to salvation are Israelites. They are Gentiles who were cast off, scattered according to the, the, the prophecy. OK, and were serving other gods, man. It became heathen like in their works. But through the preaching of the word. They put off the idols and came back, which is the same thing that's happened to us here in America. We're those Gentiles. All, we're those Gentiles. All of these things pertain only to the Israelites, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came. He came in the flesh for the purpose of redeeming those who were under the law, who was over all God blessed forever. Amen. Let's get that too. Okay. Galatians 4 and 6, I believe. Let's get that real quick. To read uh, Galatians 4, I'm going to go. Let's see if I can go back here. Give me one second. <clears throat> I want to pull it up here. Galatians chapter 4. And four, but when the fullness of time was come, the most high sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of son. All right. And in order to be made of a woman under the law. OK, according to I believe it's uh, Leviticus, the 12th chapter. Okay, let's get that. Maybe Exodus 12, but let's see. Yeah, so Yahweh Shai was made under the law. He, he, he was sent in the earth in flesh, okay, in a body just like ours made under the law to do what? To redeem them that were under the law. And who was under the law? The Israelites. We're the ones who needed redemption, all right? Who needed a better, upgraded way to be brought back to the Most High because we broke that first covenant. All right? Let's get the book of, give me one second here. Let's pull up. Leviticus. 12 and 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel saying if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of separation for her infirmity she shall be unclean and Yahweh Shai's mother went through all right the days of her separation and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised 
Yahweh Shai was circumcised on the eighth day. He was he fulfilled this law. And we can go to the book of Luke and show you all of these things. Okay? And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hollow thing. Okay? Nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. And then it gives the law if she bears a maid child, which is a, a, a female child. So there you go. And we, we can go to the scriptures and show you that Yahweh Shai fulfilled this very law, proving he would have had to come through the seed of a man. Because that's the only way he could have fulfilled the law is if he came through the seed of a man. Other than that, he didn't he wasn't perfect in the law. Anyway, going back. So Yahweh Shai was sent, okay, uh, to redeem them that were under the law. And what did he redeem us from? The curse of that law. He redeemed us from that first covenant into grace. Okay. So Romans 9 and 5. Whose are the fathers, speaking of the Israelites, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came. <laughs> so he came in the flesh for them. God bless forever, Amon. Not as though the word of Lord of the Most High have uh, taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. All right, because you had a lot of niggas attacking the church, man. The same way they're doing it now. And the same way they always have done. As pursuant to the tabernacle of David. <laughs> They've always attacked it, man. But that doesn't make the word of the Lord void. You just got to have them niggas in order for the truth to be solidified. Okay? Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Okay? And when you uh, go to the book of Galatians, it talks about peace to the Israel of the Most High. So not every Israelite walking around, you know, talking about shalom or, or you know, uh, what's up, brew. You know, that, that don't make them the Israel of the most high. You have the elect and you just have regular Israelites. But the beauty of it, the Lord is going to have mercy upon them all when it's all said and done. But there's just an order to things. So neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Why? Because Abraham had eight children. But according to the story. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Isaac would be the seed who would be heirs to the promise to then do what? Put the promise upon the head of Jacob. Okay. And Jacob would be able to pass the promise down to his 12 patriarchs, the 12 sons. Okay. It says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac, Shall thy seed be called? It was through Isaac that the seed of the promise was blessed. And that was uh, Jacob. All right. But he also blessed Esau, right? <laughs> it says, that is, all right, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the most high. You see, that sounds harsh. All right. Ishmael is a child of the flesh. Now, when you go to Ishmael, let's get it real quick. Genesis, the 17th chapter. Ishmael was not the child of the promise. Okay. However, he got a blessing. Abraham and the covenant of circumcision. Go here. Let's get Genesis 17. And. Let's see here. Here you go, that eight day old, you be circumcised, just like your shy. Anyway. Genesis 17 and 5. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarai, Sharas, all right, princess. Sarai it says, shall be her name, and I will bless her and give thee a son, all right, also of her. All right. And she was 90 years old. And I will bless her 
and she shall be the mother of nations. Now, when you keep reading it, he laughed. And Abraham was like, well, just pass the blessing down to Ishmael. Well, no. All right. What did he say? And God said, Sharah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. OK. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Shirah shall bear unto thee at the set time of next year. So right there brings to light what we just read let's read that in the nlt romans 9 and 8 all right being the descendants of abraham all right doesn't make them all right truly abraham's children okay why do you think it called isaac abraham's only begotten son all right let's see if i can find that let's see if i can find that Spelled it. Hold on, hold on. No. Hold on. Yep, this is uh, Genesis 22 and 2. Now, we know Abraham had eight children. Okay, Genesis 22 and 2. And he said, Take thine son, thine only son, Isaac whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, which is where the temple was built. So right there, you see that there's something special. As a matter of fact, let's see if we can look that up. Thine only son. See what that means in the Hebrew. All right. We know son is ban. All right. Yah. Let's see here. Yah, ha, yah, da, ka. Let's see. No, hold up. Ya ha ya dad. I believe. Anyway, when you look it up, ya ha yad, ya ha yad. Okay, the only one, solitary, the unique, <laughs> the unique one, the only begotten son. Okay. There you go. But we know Isaac had other children. So read this again. Romans 9 and uh, uh, Abraham had other children. Isaac was just the chosen. Roman, Romans 9 and 8. This means that Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily children of God. Only the children of the promised are considered to be Abraham's children. And that's through Isaac and Jacob, man. Okay. Now, going back to, to the King James, it says, for this is the word of promise. At this time, I will come and Sherah, as we just read, shall have a son. Not only this, but when Rebecca also conceived by one, even by our father, Isaac. Right. For the children being not yet born, neither having done good nor evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. Not of works, but of him that call it. And that's speaking of Jacob and Esau. Okay, so he's, he's giving you history of the promise and how it was passed down from Abraham. Not to Ishmael, not to the other sons. Hell, the, 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 the bond woman and her children were cast out of the house. Sent away. They're not the children of the promise. Now they were set, they, you know, the, the Abraham set them up. You know, they got a small little inheritance, but the, the promise went to, to Isaac. Now, he's telling you this. He's just breaking down the history. So how could you say he opened up the covenant to, to heathen? When clearly the Edomites are a nation, are they children of the Most High? Can they partake in the covenant? No. We just read that those covenants and everything that the Heavenly Father, you know, uh, uh, has good 
it's coming to the Israelites, the adoption, the covenants, the law, the, you know, the promises, the glory. Okay. So the children being not yet born, having done good or evil, speaking to Jacob and Esau, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. And who's the elect? Israel. Not of works, but of him that call it. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. We already, yep, we, we know that goes back to Genesis, the 25th chapter, when the, the you know, the, the little babies were fighting in the stomach, wrestling. She was, she went to the Lord, most likely to a prophet or a priest, all right, around that time, okay, and said what? You know, the, what, what's going on? Why am I, you know, and the prophet or you know, the men of the Lord, whoever they went to, to seek of the Lord, told her, look, <laughs> two nations are in your womb. And the elder is going to serve the younger, meaning the Edomites would eventually is going to eventually serve Jacob. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You see that? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. OK. And, and and that's just scripture. OK, he's he, he 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 made Esau in the story to be the bad guy that loses. You can't tell the heavenly father who can win and who can lose and who. No, this is his story. OK. What shall we say then? And this is what the average person will say is the is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Let's read this in the NLT. Because most people reading that will tell you, well, the God can't do that. That's not fair. Romans 9 and 14. Are we saying then that God was unfair? Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. It's his will at the end of the day. So it is God who decides who to show mercy. We can neither choose nor work for it it's ultimately up to him now lord willing he puts a spirit on the elect to turn from evil and to do particular things that are pleasing unto him but ultimately that ain't what's gonna make us right with the most high ultimately it all boils down to whoever he has mercy on man and see if you're willing to reject that he has that authority or get an attitude about it you're not fit and see, this is what Christianity and the rest of these religions and philosophies do. They, they boast themselves against the most high and tell him what he can and can't do and try to make his word not what it is. OK. For the scripture said that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you and to spread my fame throughout the earth. Now. Automatically, you should notice here how Paul goes from speaking about the Edomites, okay, and then all of a sudden he jumps to Pharaoh. What is Paul telling us in spirit? He's telling us ultimately that Esau is the modern day Pharaoh, and the Lord has built you Edomites up to this point only to crush you and destroy you. All right. To show his power. All right. That his name may be magnified. And that's what's going to happen through this second Passover. OK, let's get that in the book of Joel, the third chapter. Joel three and 19, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So Edom and Egypt are synonymous. See that? You are the modern day Pharaoh. All right? You, you, uh, you rule, all right, this spiritual Sodom and Egypt, all right, that the Bible talks about. Okay? One second here. 
it's another precept I'm thinking of. I know it's in the book of Ezekiel, but if we can't find it, I'll just post it in the comment section. Um, so there you go. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation, showing you this is a future prophecy. And Babylon the Great is that 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 place of great vengeance where hardcore judgment is coming to where it will be a desolate wilderness. Babylon the Great is the only, okay, place, all right, uh, uh, prophesied in Holy Scripture to never be dwelt in from generation to generation. Give me one second here. Let's get. Give me one second. <clears throat> Pharaoh, let's see. Pharaoh, ho ass. General title of Egyptian king, and there was many pharaohs. Now there's pharaohs, all right, that um are written about in the scriptures. Who, you know, these these niggas, you know, they. They acknowledge these niggas who come up against the scripture. They acknowledge that, you know, um, these particular pharaohs are real. But when they're mentioned in the Bible, it's fake history. Anyway, give me a second. This damn computer is tripping, man. All I want to do is see if I can get to the book of Ezekiel. Let's see. So Esau is the modern day Pharaoh at the end of the day. But there's the scripture, you know, how sometimes you, once something is on your spirit, like you can't stop until you find it. So <laughs> bear with me. You know. Let's see. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 32 and two son of man take up a lamentation up at uh, Pharaoh king of Egypt and say unto him there are like a young lying of the nations there are like a well in the seas and thou camest forth with thy rivers and troublest the waters with thy feet and foldest their rivers hmm. let me see this ain't the lamb of a Pharaoh of Egypt any way it go, it can be applied spiritually. I have to look up what was going on, whether this is just talking about something that was going on then. But this can be taken spiritually as well. And you Edomites are like a young lion, all right, who troubles the waters. What's the waters? The people. Okay? Now, going back to Romans, the ninth chapter in the 17th verse for the scripture said unto pharaoh even for this same purpose have i raised thee up showing you that in the future esau will be raised up why would he just go from esau okay to pharaoh even this same purpose i raised thee up that i might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth and it was and even unto this day we talk about that deliverance out of Egypt. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hearten, he will hearten it. All right. And that's what he can do. All right. His thoughts are not our thoughts. All right. The Lord will make you do something and then judge you for it. <laughs> Therefore he hath mercy on whom he have mercy, and whom he will, he hearten it. Meaning he 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 makes you resist his will thou will say then unto me why doth he f yet find fault for who hath resisted his will now let's get this in the uh nlt <clears throat> romans 9 and 18 so you see god chooses how to show mercy to some and he chooses to harden the hearts of others so they refuse to listen 
And that's scriptural. Even Yahweh Shai said that. That particular people, you know, uh, 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 there's angels who blocks their ears from hearing so that they can be destroyed at the end of the day. <laughs> now, that sounds harsh, but who are we to tell the Most High what he can and can't do? When if you write a movie and when, when you do things, you do it the way you want to do it, right? It says, well, then you might say, why does God blame people? All right, for not responding. OK, haven't they simply done what he makes them do? And this is the intricacy, the uh, the, the the you know, the, the 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 you can't wrap your mind around the most high. It says, no, don't say that. Who are you? A mere human being to argue with the most high. Should the thing that was crea created say to the one who created it, why has thou made me thus? And see, that's bubbleized problem. OK, that's bubbleized problem. He's saying it's not fair to teach a doctrine where Esau, Esau just loses. So if he repents, he can get a job. You know, you give him a, a uniform. All right. With, with, with Esau on it, all right, his first name and then uh, uh, Bond Esau. No. No. The the the, the repentance is not a, a, a qualification in the sense of the hell that's going to come up on them. They're going to be taken and put into chains, according to the Holy Scriptures. They, whether they repent or not now, when it's all said and done, every knee is going to bow to uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Give me one second. <clears throat> right? But to say if they repent, they can, you know, we, we'll just give them a job and they ain't going to go into captivity. You bugged out, man. And the scripture talks about how the elite ain't going to repent. They got to repent to go into to, to, to get a job and to work for us. Get out of here, man. <laughs> anyway. Nay, but old man, who art thou that replies against the most high? Shall the thing that formed say unto him that formed it? Why has thou made me thus? The, hey, the scriptures say in Sirach, some people he created and exalted them, some he created and cursed them. And it's all his will. Hath not the, pow the powder power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Can he not do that? Okay. If you're creating, all right, can cannot you make one vessel unto honor and the other unto dishonor? Absolutely. You could say, I'm creating this vessel, <laughs> all right, to uh, to, to uh, urinate in, all right? But this vessel, all right, I'm going to use for the purpose of of, uh, of clean water or, or good wine to pour it, you know, at the, at the, at the parties. It'll be an antique. You have the right to choose that according to the vessels you made. Okay? You making food? You This sandwich gets going to get cheese? I'm not going to put cheese on this one. That is your uh, 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 bidding. The, the sandwich can't look at you and say, hey, I need some cheese too. Throw some cheese on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right put two pieces of cheese no the sandwich can't do that so have not the pot the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to dishonor absolutely he can what if god willing to show forth his wrath what if the most high wanted to show forth his wrath and to make his power known Endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Let's read that in uh, the NLT. In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls who are destined to destruction. And this is where you go into the scriptures and you see like he gave the uh, Amorites and these different nations time to repent. You know, uh, 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 Pharaoh, but 
he knew they weren't going to repent, but he allowed, he suffered them. He suffered them until the said measure was fulfilled. And then he makes his move like the Amorites. What do you tell Abraham? The, the iniquity of the Amorites ain't fulfilled yet, so I'm not going to be justified in going and, and, and giving you that land right now. But through your descendants, four generations down the line, I'll allow them to enter into that land and to, to take those damn Canaanites, Pezzarites, all of those weirdites out of the land who were doing that freakiness, man. But the Lord gave them enough rope to hang themselves, man. That's what it means by that, man. So he, he's patient, like it says in uh, 2 Thessalonians, only he who will let will now let until he be taken out of the way. <laughs> he does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those whom he shows mercy. All right. Where. Who were paraded and advanced for glory like Israel, like when we win, when you Edomites fall. OK, it's, it's going to make sense why he allowed you to get as far as you got. It's going to make sense that your judgment came. It's going to be fitting and we're going to have a glory that's synonymous with that destruction. Just like uh, Pharaoh, he built up all of that fame and money and wealth and then he lost. OK, and we are among the selected both from the Jews and the Gentiles. OK. And ultimately, you had the circumcision, those who were raised in the customs, okay? Peter was the head of the circumcision as far as the uh, followers of Yahawashai, okay, who were direct followers. And then you had the Gentiles come in, okay, the Israelites who were brought in by faith in hearing the word and drawn back to their true culture, Throwing off those Greco-Roman idols, as it says in First Corinthians, all right, the uh, the uh, twelfth chapter, ye were Gentiles carried away of those dumb idols. But see, you had a lot of those high-minded circumcision, the Jews, that were saying, no, the Gentiles can't come back in unless they be circumcised after the manner of Moses, unless they got this on their clothing and that's that and this. Well, the, the 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 bottom line is the Holy Spirit was on them before they did all of those things. Okay? So it says, concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy in the book of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people and will love those whom I did not love. In the place where they were told, ye are not my people here in Babylon the great, there you will be called the children of the living God. And that's happening now. Let's get that prophecy. See, when you read this, he just jumps into this prophecy. Okay, sure, then we're going to prove that the, the, the Gentiles are Israelites. Okay? Hosea 1 <laughs> In 10, yet the number of the children of Israel, because when you read up, he gave a similitude, told him to go get a harlot and have two children by her, which was symbolic. So God said, call the other one child, lo, I me, for they are not my people. All right. Ye are not my people and I, I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass in that place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There shall it be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land for great is the day of Jezreel, the seed of the power. All right. The seed of the power, man. So. This proves in Romans, the ninth chapter, these Gentiles are speaking about Israelites. The Gentiles who were not called the people of the Lord through faith and obedience will be called the children of the most high. OK, let's go back to, to the NLT. 
So concerning the Gentiles, God says in prophecy in Hosea, which we just read, those who are not my people, I will call my people and I will love those whom I did not love. We will receive mercy, the mercies of David. And then at the place where they were told, ye are not my people. There they will be called the children of the living God. Ain't that happening? Concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried out, Though the people of Israel be as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. And what was that remnant be saved for? To be heirs to the promise given unto Abraham as he went through the whole history, Isaac and Jacob. How, how are we going to get that promise? Because the promise was into the, 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 the seed and the descendants. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants. So, though Israel is going to be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant is going to be saved. So he basically put precept upon precept. He 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 took you to Isaiah. He first he took you to Hosea one, then he took you to Isaiah ten, which we always read that. Okay, so that remnant are those Gentiles, man, who will receive the promise, okay, before we did anything right or wrong, we received that promise, <laughs> okay? <laughs> For the Lord will carry out this sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality, all right, and it's coming. And Isaiah said the same thing in another place, if the Lord's of heaven's armies have not spared a few children we would have been wiped out like Sodom and destroyed like Gomorrah okay well, let's go back here to the, the King James okay he basically going through the scriptures I mean he's in the spirit he giving you precepts quoting quoting Isaiah so he he could not have believed the Edomites would have been delivered when the 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 in the book of Isaiah, you know, Edomites are condemned. Okay? Romans 9 and 30. What shall we say then that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith? OK. And they weren't brought in by the keeping of the laws perfectly. They were brought in through faith. But Israel. All right. Followed which followed after the law of righteousness have not obtained to the law of righteousness. Speaking of those those uh, high minded Jews who rejected the Messiah. Let's read this in the NLT. It says, why not? Because they're trying to get right with God by keeping the law. Let's go to 31. But the people of Israel who try so hard to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded. Okay. Why not? Because they were trying to get right by God, uh, by keeping the law. Hold up. Right. Romans 9 and 31, but the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded because of his flesh. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in him. They stumbled over the, the over the rock in their path, man. Yahweh Shai. <laughs> God warned them of this in the scriptures when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem. That makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. And that, that rock is speaking of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, point blank, period. So that's it. That's that's these 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 Israelites who are seeking righteousness by the law and not by faith. They're stumbling at Yahweh Shai. You see, we are those Gentiles who ultimately are brought in through faith, through grace, through mercy, who were chosen from the foundation of the earth with the gift before we did anything good or bad, 
there was a promise made for a particular remnant. So I just wanted to go through that, man. Hopefully I'll edify. Shalom.